welcome back to the coloring zone my name is helena um now today i am going to be sharing how i use my bambino crayons in um this lovely book so this is a million magical creatures and it's by lulu mayo now the page that i've been working on is this one here so for the background i've used soft pastels it's actually jane davenport's iridescent ones um i don't think you can really see it you can see it in person slightly it's quite subtle but i don't think you're going to be able to pick that up on camera um now i have used bambino crayons on this little fox um and these two i did add some pencil over the top of this one excuse me and the <laughs> the iridescent um soft pastels has sort of like the sparkles on most things but as i said it's quite subtle and i have got my um some of these handmade beautiful pinks on here as well so what i thought we could do is we'll do this little frog up here like i've done it down here now the colors that i've used so the colors that i've used are these here so these are the bambino coloring crayons i absolutely love these um there's 24 they're very small um but they do the job and they work really really well so they are clay based and um i just i absolutely love um this product i just wish that bambino would um would create some more colors <laughs> that would be amazing but um anyway so um i am gonna do this little frog here on camera and you can see how how i do it so they're really easy to use um do you know i'm just thinking like whether i think it might have been these that i've used anyway so i'm going to start off with the green on the outside now it's quite a dark it's quite dark today um so i'm hoping you'll be going to be able to see this well on camera i have got the light on um So I tend to hold them like this only because um, I then tend to use less pressure. Yeah, so they're so easy to work with. I know my my initial thought was to do an entire page um, with the Bangbino crayons. And I, I mean, I could do that, but... Um, I, I quite like using different mediums, so um, I'm not going to do that for this video, but I will show you how I do the frog, um, the next sort of little fox, and also this one here, I used Bambino crayons as well for the trombone. Is it a trombone? I think it is. Trumpet. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. Sorry, guys, if you're... Um, if you're into your instruments, I'm not entirely sure um, what is what. Do you know what? My sister actually used to, um, she used to actually play this, only for a very, very short time, though. Um, so, yeah, I tend to go dark colour first, um, and I'm using quite hard pressure on the edges and then sort of feathering it out. So, um, you know, for, for those of you that use coloured pencils, that's sort of what we do with our pencils anyway um yes so these are just so easy and nice to use um so i'm just going to do the arm yep that would do and then we can always go um go over it a little bit if we wanted to add some more color i do want to make sure that i'd leave some high light um, so I do tend to like layer with these rather than going really hard pressure initially. And also this paper, I mean, it does, um, it has taken me quite a long time to get used to it, if I'm honest. Um, but I seem to be getting there and I'm using more and more mediums in here. Um, but yeah, it is different to other papers that I've worked on. Um I did have a comment by Yasmin about about the paper in this book and she said is it better than than Amazon paper now I've not worked that much on Amazon paper but I would say 
it is thicker than Amazon paper. Um, but, um, you know, I think with any, with any, um, with any book, all mediums react differently. So you really do have to test it. And um, even though, you know, a particular brand might work really, really well for me, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for you. Um, so I think it's just all about experimenting and sometimes, you know, just not having that pressure on yourself and just trying to enjoy the process of it rather than, you know, just try it out and see if it works. Um, I really do like these um, Bambino crayons. I think they're great. I really, really enjoy using them. So I'm going to add some, some more yellow. Now, I believe these crayons are available on um, on Amazon and they also have a website, Bambino. Um, I've been meaning to buy their jumbo crayons. I'm really interested to see, um, you know, how they how they differ. Um, and I'm not sure I, I can't imagine that the jumbo crayons or jumbo pencils are necessarily clay based i'm not entirely sure um but yeah i really do want to try them out i know that um rachel who um is also a fellow youtuber um so she is called rachel henderson um i've been watching quite a few of her videos recently and i know that she's got um jumbo crayons i went a little bit out of the line but that doesn't matter it's all fun it's all fun so I'm going to add some white now just to just to sort of just blend it a little bit. And that one and this one. So there's a little frog. So I don't think that took too long. I mean, I could add a little bit more depth um, using the darker green. And in fact, I think I actually did use this darker colour um just on the edges slightly and that can be darker it's, this would here would be a little bit darker as well i suppose yeah there's just limited tooth um to this paper um it's not it's not joanna basford paper put it that way but i mean the price of this book on offer when are they first released they're normally around three pounds <laughs> Um, so the paper quality is really, really good for the price. Um, but yeah, as I said, it is not Joanna Basford paper. So my advice would just to be just, you know, test it. So I'm just going to use my, I actually have got my brush here. I'll do that. <laughs> Normally I just blow it, but no, I won't do that. So there is that one. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. Now, this little dude here, um, I did last night and to be honest, I know he looks all right, but I think I could sort of smooth out the colour a little bit. Um, so I might just add to this one. Yeah, I've just sort of, with this one, I've very much layered it, but they are, they're so fun. They're so fun to, to work with. Now, the piano keys, I have actually used Prismacolor for them. And also for this thing here. Um, but yeah. So it's not. And I've used various different um, metallic and sparkly paints as well. So I've used Archie's um, watercolours. I will link that in the description below. I've got a grab bag. I believe the lady's name is Kayla. Um, that runs that shop on etsy and i've also used renaissance fortune which i've also i've been calling it calling it Fortnite, but it's actually fortune <laughs> um and then i've also used archie's no i think it's just archie's and um renaissance actually for this page yeah um so there's that one right i'm gonna move over to this bigger dude here and we shall see how we get on. So you might hear some background noise. My husband's um, 
just putting some some dishes away in the kitchen my son's asleep we went to soft play and uh yeah so he's pretty he's pretty he's pretty knackered bless him um he was on the go for over two hours giving it beans so it's hardly surprising really um yeah for for this i'm not going to worry too much about about fur um strokes and things um i try not to to sort of stress too much over those sorts of things because it is it's a fun book and you know it's not meant to be in my eyes it's not meant to be realistic um it's very much sort of fantasy and i like to keep things relatively simple um yeah Yeah, I find holding the Bambino crowns like this, as opposed to like this, it really helps um, prevent like the aching because you're not putting as much pressure on there. And to be honest, you don't really need to um, because they are they are pigmented, as you can see. Um, so you're able to cover quite large areas within quite a short space of time. Am I going to do the face different? No. I suppose I could do, do it a bit different. I'm still going in, in the same direction as what the fur would be, just because it's just, it is just habit. It's just, yeah, it's just what I do. Um, I suppose my colouring style isn't really realistic or even... At times it's not even semi-realistic um, but then I suppose that is you know the books that I tend to colour in on on you know they're not realism are they so so there is that colour now I'm going to move over to the yellowy orange colour and I'm just going to go over the top of it I missed his little Paula, so I'm just going to add a bit here. Yeah, I've been filming quite a lot, actually, guys. Um, I seem to be on a bit of a roll when it comes to to filming videos at the moment. The editing, however... Um, I'm still quite slow on because, I mean, it's not like the best, most enjoyable thing. I have got better at it, though. I am getting a lot quicker at it. <laughs> um, but it's still not my favourite thing to do with, you know, creating videos. It's definitely not one of my, uh, one of my faves. But, you know, um, I'm glad to be able to, to film videos, um, and I do really enjoy making videos. Um, so, yeah, I just don't feel like I've got ever enough time. Um, but I suppose that's with lots of things, isn't it? We all have our... Um, we all have our things that we need to do. And sometimes things do get in the way. Like, yeah, guys, um, answering comments... And like responding to comments, I know I'm pretty rubbish at that, doing it speedily. Um, it is, I'll do like a few and then, you know, I'll need to do something else or I get a phone call or something and then, and then I forget. <laughs> and, and then it's, um, and then it's been a few more days, so... Um, I really do appreciate how patient you guys are, um, particularly when you've asked me a question and it takes me like a week to get back to you. Like, I do apologise. Um, I am trying to get more into a rhythm of doing it, but my son is just the obsession with my mobile phone. I'm trying to avoid using it around him. Um, yeah. 
so there is that one i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go over once more just really really lightly but yeah look how much color is coming off of that and i'm like i'm barely putting any pressure down it's quite amazing um what these can do these crayons and that is my son he's just woken up bless him right i'm going to use this yellow and then i'm going to go up and see my son and it might be that i have to film a little bit a little bit later for the for the trumpets and i'm planning to use some prismacolor on on here as well so i'm going to leave it there um obviously you're going to see it all at the same time but um yeah i'll be back so the lighting is completely different now guys because it is now evening <coughs> sorry excuse me a little frog in my throat so um i have i've done this one here and this one here now now i would like to show you how i do this one on these two instruments um yeah let me know in the comments below guys like what's the difference that's a trumpet but then what is that that's something saxophone mm. yeah anyway let me know in the comments below i'm i'm, I'm intrigued so um i think i might do this one here first i hope the lighting's okay guys so i used three colors for this one and i think i also might have used white as well um sorry i've got some pen on my finger um so yes so same same sort of um same sort of process just doing in the dark colors first and then fading it out i think i did quite a heavy heavier application on this part because this is meant to be in shadow and then where he's holding it i'm also putting in a bit of a shadow um yes so how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a lovely Christmas and New Year. I can't believe we're on the 9th of January already. Um, it just seems a bit crazy to me, to be honest. And so, yes. Right, so I'm now going to go to the, like a yellowy orange sort of colour. And just go over just go over all of it where I put the last colour yeah it would be amazing if Bambino would um come out with more colours I'd be so happy because although you can you know you can blend them but it's just nice to have it would be nice to have like more it's always nice to have more isn't it <laughs> particularly with um colour selection so there is that one and then this is the more sort of like brighter yellow i can't remember whether i went over that bit or not i don't know whether i did i'm going to just add that there and then i don't think i'm going to have any white on that part and just go over i did go out a little bit out of the lines but you know it doesn't matter i'm going to just add that bit there and then I'm just going to go over this bit with the white. I'm sort of deciding on what I want to do with this part. I'm like umming and ahhing whether I should just finish it off on camera with you guys. That looks alright, doesn't it? So let's do this one here. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with this part either. I haven't decided. So Lulu's putting quite a lot of shading on this part. Um, which is ideal and these little sort of lines just tell you where there's, it's like an indication of where the shadows might go which is always handy I hope you can see this okay I don't know whether to zoom in I'll zoom you in a bit guys yeah so I must say I don't think I cracked my I cracked my um the back of my phone now I have an iPhone 12 I think it's called um, and it's a pro but I think it is affecting the camera so I have arranged to get it fixed now Apple were going to charge me £376 just to replace the back of the phone and um, not even the front 
um, which, and I understand that it's got quite a few camera lenses on the back of it. So, you know, that they do have that to contend with. I ended up doing it through my bank insurance. Now, luckily they cover accidental damage. I don't even remember it happening. I think it must have been in my pocket and I lent on it or something. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so it is actually getting repaired, which is um, amazing. And it's only going to cost me £50, <laughs> which is a stark difference from 376 The guy in the Apple store was hilarious. He was like, oh, well, um, you don't have warranty if you get it done elsewhere. Um, so it is worth having and I was like I'm not I can't pay that much like I can't justify it and I was like it's the back of the phone like I'm not even that bothered but as time's gone on I have noticed that you know that the, it doesn't seem to be as good the quality of my videos so I do apologize um it is going to be rectified it'll be interesting to see I'm pretty sure um that um it will make a difference so there's that one and then i'm going to add this yellowy one and i actually might add some secure glaze to the instruments so i'm just going to do this little pot here because it's annoying me so i have been using i use prisma colors for all of the little piano keys and also for this ribbon um and i also haven't done up there either so i'll just quickly do that now so this one here's blue sorry i hope that was on camera you might hear my son my um my husband is just giving him a bath it was an emergency bath i'm sure some parent well i'm sure all parents would understand what i mean by that <laughs> wasn't a planned bath um but yeah so we've had a really nice day today and we went to the soft play. Um, it's called Jump. And uh, my son really enjoyed that. He was giving it beans for two hours. I think I might have mentioned actually in this later on, um, earlier on in this video. Or it might have been another video that I was filming because I am, I'm cluster filming, guys. So there is that one. I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my white. So this is Prisma White, and this one here is True Blue. It's a new pencil extender because it's it's rather small. Um, so yeah, I'm not like yeah, I'm not doing um, too much with with these keys. I just kept, kept keep it simple. Was my sort of thought process on it? That one there does look quite a bit darker than some of the others, but anyway, the purple's next. So this is Perma Violet. Um, so I do use, I use Prismacolor in these books and I also use, obviously you can see I use metallic pinks as well and I also use um, soft pastels, obviously Bambino crayons and Pablo's, I think I've tried Holbein's in here as well. Yeah, so yeah I'm sort of experimenting, I've used gelatos as well, polychromos um yeah i've done quite a few pictures um in these books now which i i will link actually i have um done a video on all of my completed pages in these books so if you're interested i will link that here so you can check that out if you haven't already that one and then so the green is it's true green yeah i would say prisma colors are still sort of my like comfort zone <laughs> Like I use different mediums and then if there's still some of the details that I'm not sure about, then I just tend to, um, I just tend to use pencil, normally Prismacolors, if I'm not sure what to do with it. Because, yeah, they are my, they're like my little comfort blanket, really, Prismacolors, because they're the ones that I started off with. So the next one is Lemon. Oh no, it's Deco Yellow. Yeah, really nothing sort of um special with with this i hope it's not boring guys um yeah i hope this video is not too long and this is just the white prisma color and then the last one is the pink and I'm just going over with the white 
and it just sort of blends it out and does does the work for you now i did a very very light layer of the blue on here so the true blue um and do you know what i think i might actually use these colors for this part as well um just so it's more i don't know sort of like cohesive is that the right word i'm not sure um i'm just going to do this this just because it's quicker than getting my um paints out which i've actually put away so i'm going to do this part here now color shall i start i don't think i'm going to include the purple just because these parts are purple so i think i'm just going to go with the blue and maybe do it so the middle part is the darkest part and then just sort of fade it out that's the blue and the pink i should probably sharpen these but i'm not going to it's a whole table with the camera will start rocking and i don't want you guys to feel sick but yeah i do really love using prisma colors but then you know i've got so many new mediums mainly my um the watercolors which i just adore um so shall i include the purple mm. is it gonna look weird without it do you know i suppose there's actually only going to be one of them so i'm gonna do it yeah why not purple and then back to the blue i have to remember guys when i'm zoomed in like this to take you back out again <laughs> yeah i was so surprised i shouldn't jinx it but i was so surprised that i didn't mess up on the order of these <laughs> these colors so it's actually they are all in the right order and i didn't have to rub anything out or anything so that was quite good so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just pause for a second have a look at it and then come back um and i think what i'm gonna do is use rainbow dust on these parts here i think that would be a really nice addition and i would also like to go over some of the um black lines where i've gone over with a prisma color they are quite opaque so of course what happens is you dull the black lines um and i never really thought it would be worth it but now i do it after seeing you know coloring with k do it um, it does make such difference so um, I'm just going to do that and I will be back. So I've just gone all over the um, notes with a fine liner. Now the one that I've used is this one here um, and it is the Pilot Drawing Pen and it is a 0.5. Um, so I, I think I might have got this in a subscription box. Yeah I'm really impressed with it actually. Um, it is quite a thick nib but then when you tilt it on its side you can actually create quite thin lines so it's quite versatile so i'm quite happy with this one um so i'll be keeping this to the side of me for me to use um anyway so what i've done is i've put a bit of water or quite a lot of water on this one here now these paints are by rebecca and um she um, has her own store. I've mentioned her on my channel quite a few times. I use her paints very regularly. Um, so I'm going to wait for that on there to sort of soak in. Um, but in the meantime, what I'm going to do is use my Secura glaze pen to go over some of the elements on the page. Um, I thought, well, I might as well do it on camera. So, um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this one here. So then I don't put my hand in it. Um, so this one here i'm just going to make sure that it's relatively clean yeah little tip so um the nibs do need um they do need not cleaning but just to wipe it on something sometimes particularly if you're going over pencil and prisma colors seems to be particularly bad um where it just clogs up the um the nib um so i'm just going to do this one here now i don't think i'm going to do I haven't decided whether to do the keys or not. Um, no, I think I'm going to leave the keys. Um, so I'm just going to go over these two parts. Now, I don't think I've actually used um, a Secura Glaze pen over Bambino crayons before. Um, so it might go horribly wrong. You just never know, do you, <laughs> till you try these things out. Uh, it seems to be going on relatively well. 
It might be that I need to do two coats um, with any areas that I've missed. Um, if it does need another coat, I will do. I will do it off camera. Um, of course, I'll show you um, at the end if that's the case. So that is that one. I'm just going to go here now. Um, obviously, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to work from left to left to right and from top to bottom. This is actually quite a large area to do with this pen, but I have got spare ones, so it's not too much of an issue. I do tend to use the Secure Glaze Pen over smaller areas rather than big ones. I might need to go over that black area, but we'll see. It seems to be, you know, it's flowing quite nicely over the top of these Bambino crayons, um, which is ideal. Because as I said, Prismacolors, you know, yeah, it can be a bit of a a bit of a job to get them on. Polychromos, it works perfectly over. But yeah, there's always bits where you've missed. So my advice would be to um, to let it dry and then go over it again. And I'm going to do this one here, over here. Right, I'm just going to let that dry, guys, and I shall be back. So I've let this um, this water s settle um, on on the rainbow dust paint. Um, so I'm just going to add a bit a bit more water. I think um, I'm, I'm going to do one layer to start with and see what I think, and then um, I can just apply another layer if needed. I'm using a very very cheapy brush. Um, I'm pretty sure I bought these on Amazon. Um, so I'm just going to start at the top and work my way down. Um, so I hope you can see. Uh, yeah. And I have left it quite a long time for the fine liner um, to, to settle. Do you know what? One thing I didn't do is I didn't check to see if it was um, resistant or waterproof, should I say. And of course, when it dries, I will lift it up to the camera. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. Be a bit careful um, around certain areas because I do. I think I just want it on this ribbon thing. Yeah, I try to use the cheaper um, brushes for the glitter. I say that, but to be honest, if something's close to me. Um, I do try to, but I do end up using all types of brushes um, for the glitter. But it, once the glitter's in there, I think it's always in there. I think it's very, very hard to get it out. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because I love it. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna keep it going. I'm just dipping my brush into some water and getting more of this to apply it to the paper. So I have now gone over it just the once and actually I'm really happy with the amount of sparkle that's there. Um, so I will just tilt it. These are still wet. I have gone over with another coat of um, the Sakura Glaze um, and this section here on this um, trumpet or whatever instrument it is, I completely missed. So, um, yeah, I'm really pleased with how this one here has come out. I think it's very fun, very different. And this Fortune paint by Renee is just absolutely incredible. Um, and I particularly love the um, rainbow dust of Rebecca's paints from the Art Spirits. Now, the other one that I use quite a lot is called um, Magic Fairy Dust. So it this one's magic fairy dust and then this one here is the rainbow dust. I'm just going to put up to the camera just so you can see the difference. Um, but yeah, these are absolutely beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed that and it wasn't it wasn't too boring. Um, yeah, if you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, um, please get, drop me a comment and um, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Um, I had such fun completing this page and I'm glad I was able 
um, to share some of the process with you using Bambino crayons and also Prismacolors and these beautiful paints that I've got. So I'm going to leave it there and clean up my desk <laughs> and um, I shall see you in the next video. Happy colouring everyone. Bye!